building is where we have spent the last four years of our lives. We met our best friends and family. This is home. But home is not a place, rather it is the people that fill the place. It is seeing Big Mo in the lunchroom, the smell of Mr. Farnan's pipe, the kid you sit next to an English class, your knocker neighbor who never looks out of the way, Miss Burgess getting on the intercom and nobody understanding a thing, and all those wonderful people we're lucky enough to call our friends. We have laughed, cried, celebrated, and lost as a class. When I look back at our very first moments, it brings me to the freshman bash in Electric Park. We were all handed little yellow directories with every one of our names in it and encouraged to highlight each name once we met or talked to them. But that directory was just the beginning. 1,362 days ago, we began our journey in high school together when we were rushed down the red carpet, met our locker partners, went to Ms. Schroeder's Latin class, stacked our lunch bags as high as we could, and awkwardly linked up and sang the alma mater with a handful of classmates who would be with us all four years, being told time and time again to be the one. Our first all school assembly and Mr. Best was wrapping for the whole school, and then our very first one. Just like every other year, Mr. Rose tells the freshmen to arrive at noon, although that gives no time at all to get it all done. We ended up spelling the eagle wrong, but being the sophomores anyway. We rushed the field after beating Bishop E.H., and we got to enjoy our school's first ever football state championship. We all got to try out using waivers for the first time, and soon enough, one day before high school career was over. As the second semester began, all any of us talked about was who we were going to WPA with and competing in spring Olympics. We hardly pulled together an orange gym team, but Jackson Taylor pulled away with the underdog win in musical cheers. We experienced all of our firsts that year, happily thinking we would be in high school forever. Sophomore year began, and before we knew it, so did the mold. Many of us could finally, <laughs> many of us could finally drive to school, which meant that everyone had their certain spot, and we could all remember the rugby boys putting off certain spots every morning. We single-handedly created the most hated class shirt I've ever heard of, and got the sophomore boys back involved for too many weeks. We got our first full cool homecoming week experience and finally got to attend the dance. Our second canned food drive, and before we knew it, karaoke, candy grams, and Santa pictures came and went. Several of us had the chance to participate in the DC March for Life, and we went to our third high school dance and enjoyed one of our last activities as a community. March 13th was our last day of normal school. The Iron Man trip was canceled, Father Wager walked the halls with holy water in hand, and nobody knew what spring break had in store. We struggled for two months of online school and sent several emails explaining to our teachers how the Wi-Fi wasn't working, but in reality, we accidentally slept in the class. <laughs> we said goodbye to the class of 2020 on the football field and wondered if that was to be our fate. Finishing our sophomore year with the press of a red lead button, we wondered if we would be back in the fall. Luckily, we were able to attend in-person school in early September of 2020. We welcomed the class of 2024 at a distance and celebrated homecoming decorations, skit, routines, and maps on the field. However, this did not stop us from finding a way. We had a modified Christmas week, and soon enough, we were taking the ACT and worrying about GPA scores. We were able to participate in the CYO showdown, and that brought Spring Olympics into full swing. We had our first ever ginger themed event, and finished our junior year with high hopes for the last year of high school. And finally, senior year, our year, the class of 2022. It started on August 16th, the day we all woke up at an ungodly hour to run 200 some scared freshmen down the red carpet, just as we had for years prior. We brought energy, joy, and life back to the halls of Aquinas and never looked back. You all walked into orientation day, wondering why there was a clown on your yearbook, and there is still no explanation. <laughs> This is the year of class. Trying so desperately to be better than a Lego shirt, and yet we accidentally put names of people who no longer go here on the back. <laughs> Our final homecoming game and dance came in. We cheered, fought for each other, and showed up when the odds were in our favor. Katie Doris wanted to leave high school with the priest knowing her name, and Father Ashmore did just that. This brings us to our <laughs> final plan for you, Joy, when everyone wanted to see Luke shave his head. We started a never ending game of assassins. That was so not worth the worry, and we finally enjoyed a normal Christmas at Aquinas. And like Mr. Brown would say, there it is. Seven days of high school over, just like that. As Christmas break ended, we began our final stretch at St. Thomas Aquinas. Truly, the beginning of the end. We went to our final WPA, participated in the CYO showdown.
We are the class of the earth. We have taken St. Thomas Aquinas and run with it. We have seen this place go from a dingy locker rooms and scary weight room to remodeled locker rooms and a highly fluctuating fitness center. We have successfully made it out of here without causing a scene with the offices and minimal damage to the software room. But this is the end. We all heard our happy birthday over the intercom one last time. We attended our last football and national games. We got to have our own senior nights, and in five days, we will walk across the stage as the class of 2022. This brings me to my final thoughts as I look back at what Aquinas has given us. We all attended Aquinas for one reason or another, and in the end, it came down to our faith. As seniors, we are blessed with many unique opportunities to personally choose to explore our faith and who we are as people. My faith grew in more ways than any of you can know, and that is thanks to all of you. We have all learned so much about our faith and who we want to be from one another. We have learned to be ourselves, keep the path, keep our heads up, smile, and most importantly, to love. There is beauty here at Aquinas that people who simply walk through our halls will miss. But when all of you look back at your years here, I hope you were able to see that beauty, and most importantly, be that beauty. I have my yellow director right here with me today, and each one of your names is highlighted. Class of 2022, you will forever hold a place in my heart. Here are a few things to remember as we go our separate ways. Be the one, make it count, find a way, and finally, create while you're here. And like Troy Bolton once said, Aquinas is having friends we'll keep for the rest of our lives, and that means we're really all in this once the same, always the same. On more than she on me, love will conquer.
One final note. You all will hear from me one thing. Two more times all the class of 2022. So I, I will say it's been one of the greatest pleasures of my life to be here this last year as a Thomas Wine. Thank you all so much for being who you are. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here with you after this school. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.
I wanted to make sure, and I tell the faculty all the time, and I think it's mentioned this morning if you haven't opened your email yet, they really are the core of what we are at St. Thomas Aquinas. They've been the consistent piece throughout the years, and it's a joke to an extent that when you come to Aquinas, you retire at Aquinas. And that has been so true throughout the years, and, and their dedication and, and their love for teaching our students is just tremendous. So if we could have Lisa Brigant, Susan Harding, Suisa Molson, and Dr. Mike Sullivan come on front.
department would like to announce the following awards. For excellence in family and consumer science, the award goes to Dylan Potter. contributions in class. This year, the department would like to honor Eva Nab. Thank you. 
came to your door. Matt Holzmeister. change. We joined the national campaign called 40 Days for Life twice in the fall and the spring. We showed our love and care for the residents of Villa St. Francis. We walked six miles to witness for life and provide charity, specifically over $35,000 to Nativity House for Women, Advice in a Pregnancy Center, Wyandotte Pregnancy Center, Olathe Pregnancy Center, KCK Pregnancy Center, St. Mary Home for Women, and Birthright. We value them both. Women and child, we value them both. At the heart of all of these events were two young ladies offering leadership and numerous hours, valuing all life at every stage. Both these young ladies will receive the St. Thomas Aquinas Culture of Life Award. The award goes to both Emily Eckerberg and Mara Lopez. On behalf of my fellow moderators, the conscientious Mr. Jim Holling and memory maker Serena Price, I'm honored and a bit humbled to recognize these executive student council officers. If they would, please come forward. Student council at St. Thomas Aquinas is a pretty big deal. You might not know it, but in our school's 34 years, we have been privileged to entertain many talented leaders including some previous student council presidents. Here are a few. Joe Novacek, Sean McCullough, Lindsey Mackey, 
Ryan Tinker, Jenna Booty, Annie Lind, Devin Diggs, Gabe Kraft, Ben Ferguson, and Mr. Luke Kaneski. Junior Grace Kelly recently addressed the student body and said, for all of us, freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, this was the first normal year of high school. And she added, I'm having a blast. And it was a blast, thanks in large part to this senior class. Last spring, I watched the senior-to-be Stucco speeches, and I was so impressed by the energy and enthusiasm. Kayleen Doe, had you jumping out of your seats. This was a group that would not be discouraged. They would not let go of their pursuit of normal, holding on, as it were, for God's blessing. What a great example you have set, whether it was Charlie Luther's videos, Tim Tyson acing every test in the building, <laughs> Katie Doerr singing and dancing, Matthew Holzmeister, well, just being Matthew Holzmeister. <laughs> Claire Gassel hitting someone on the lacrosse field, Timmy Novacek <laughs> guiding us through Spring Olympics, or Ella Hoffman smiling the world's best smile. We were blessed by you. Our theme this year was create while you're here. Perhaps it was a bit presumptuous as it seemed like it was just enough to be here. After all, didn't Woody Allen say that 90% of life is just showing up? St. Paul wrote, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Maybe that is the missing 10%, the creative part of life. It is what makes things special, beautiful, inspiring. It's another thing that separates us from our fellow creatures. It makes us unique. We have the capacity to be creative. We can make Friday, fry yay. <laughs> we can create ideas, community, goals, solutions, new beginnings. For we are God's handiwork, created for excitement, for joy, for family, for laughter, <coughs> for faith, peace, life, created for a relationship with our Creator. And so, that's the challenge for all of us going forward. While we're here, while we're anywhere, get busy doing good. Get busy doing what God prepared you to do. Congratulations, Elizabeth, Lawson, Timmy, and Luke. Thank you for your leadership for pushing us all to do more to create while we're here. The Outstanding Varsity Senior Award is a way to recognize the multi-sport athlete. This award is presented to a senior, one male and one female, who excel in the athletic arena through their individual accomplishments, contributions to their teams, and thereby St. Thomas Aquinas, while demonstrating good sportsmanship. The focus and goal of this award is to recognize athletes who lead by example, show hard work and dedication, and demonstrate their love for athletics and team involvement throughout their high school careers. Our first recipient is a five-time varsity letter winner, an all-state performer in the 4x400 meter relay, was a four-year participant of our volleyball program, took third in state in volleyball this past fall, is a member of the state champion girls track and field team, holds the school record in the 4x100 meters, and was recently awarded the Kansas State High School Activities Association True Blue Scholarship for girls track and field, which is awarded for involvement in the community and demonstrated academic and activity achievement. It's an honor to award this to Jane Beffer. <laughs> Our 
Our next recipient is an eight-time varsity letter winner, a two-time individual state champion, a four-time team state champion, holds the school record in the 1600 meters, has the number one time in Kansas State history on the four by mile relay, and was awarded the Gatorade Player of the Year Award in the fall. It's an honor to award this to Logan Seeger.
congratulations to our class of 2022. This is the first of the three hurdles we have to go through to get you on your merry way in adulthood here. Um, I have one request that if you're an alumni and your parents are alumni, well, you're not alumni yet, if your parents are alumni, um, and we need a picture. So if we can gather all you guys in the corner over here, we'll get you set up and have a nice cute picture that we'll be able to send out. Um, on that note, we will see you all at Baccalaureate on Tuesday night at St. Michael the Archangel Parish, and the Mass will start at 7.